in this video, we will apply some of our due diligence tips from previous videos in a real world private equity due diligence example. Now, before we get started, if you enjoy this content and would like to see more, please make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons and click the link in the description below for a one page summary of this video. So let's get started by going through a real world private equity due diligence example. Let me share with you a real world private equity due diligence experience that we all might be able to learn from. I was contacted by a connection I had at the corporate finance department of an accounting firm. He and his team were acting as bankers on a deal for a company that they believed was perfect for me. So I had a 45 minute call with the team where they told me about this tremendous opportunity. After that, I signed the NDA and was presented with the confidential information memorandum, the SIM. When reading the SIM, I skipped all of the fluff about how this company had the best products in the world, unique growth opportunities into new countries and the best team. And I went straight to the numbers, straight to the EBITDA numbers, which were on the 37th page of the 40 page SIM. I wanted to see how much the company was making by looking at the company's EBITDA. And I wanted to see any adjustments that the bankers have made to make EBITDA look higher than it should be. Well, I found quite a few adjustments, but there was one specific adjustment that was not mentioned on the 45 minute call and probably should have appeared earlier than the 37th page on the SIM. And that adjustment was a one-time shareholder payment where the owner paid himself a one-time payment. That was a significant amount. Now, let me explain a little more about the company to show you why this was a big deal. The one-time shareholder payment occurred right before the bankers were hired. And at that time, the company had a large debt balance and was over leveraged. So instead of using excess cash to pay down debt in the over leveraged company, the owner paid himself money, kept the debt on the business, then hired bankers to sell the business. Now, here's the thing. The business had been around for many years. And while the business made a lot of money in the past, recently, the business was not making any money. So the business was not generating enough cash to pay down the interest of the debt. But in the SIM, it was hard for any potential investor to figure this out because the bankers made so many adjustments to EBITDA to make it look like the company was making money. So the owner took money out of a business that didn't have the cash to be sustainable, then hired bankers to sell the business and to bury negative information, the one-time shareholder payment, make EBITDA adjustments to improve the perception of the company's performance and be overly optimistic about growth opportunities for the future. Now, when I first started my career buying private companies, I would be upset that bankers would try to bury negative information, make EBITDA adjustments, and be overly optimistic about growth opportunities for the future. But now, when dealing with bankers, I realize that this is how the game is played. So I approach the bankers to share my findings and to get an explanation just in case I misinterpreted anything. When I ask the bankers to justify the reasoning for the investor withdrawing money from the company, considering the debt balance and to provide more detail on the EBITDA adjustments, well, just as good bankers do, they answered my question by talking about the overly optimistic future of the business. When I asked the questions again, and the bankers realized that I would not continue without a reasonable explanation, well, that was the end of my due diligence experience with that company. The bankers thanked me for my interest in this opportunity, 
told me they will send me future opportunities and moved on to shop the deal around to other investors, where of course, the deal would be perfect for those investors. Now here's a final thought. Investors, if you're going to buy private companies, know how the game is played and make sure you fully understand the numbers. Please do your best to look past well-pitched opportunities and make sure you understand the numbers behind each opportunity. Ask lots of questions, and if you don't get the answers that you like, then don't do the deal. In this video, we applied some of our due diligence tips from previous videos in a real-world private equity due diligence example. If you have any tips to share based on a due diligence experience, whether you were buying or selling a company, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like and subscribe buttons. And in the description below, you'll find links to a free one-page resource, our website, and our LinkedIn page, where you can find more information on this topic and other private equity topics. Thanks, and we'll see you in our next video.